Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Foreign Correspondent Club of Thailand. Um, my name is Panu Wangcha Um. Uh, I'm a senior reporter with Reuters and also the former president of the FCCT. Um, I would like to welcome all of you to the Foreign Correspondent Club uh, on our panel discussion, what happened in the Thai election and expert views. Much has been written about the significant and political consequences of Thailand's national vote on May 14th. But tonight, we are he here to look at the actual vote, the numbers, the breakdown, voting patterns and trends in one of the most closely tracked polls the country has ever held. The final outcome will not be finalized, uh, possibly for the next 60 days, but the campaign period as well as the voting patterns and conduct of the poll are being closely tracked. The International Institute for Democracy and Electoral Assistance, or International IDEA, and the Foreign Correspondent Club of Thailand are pleased to host this panel discussion with expert observers and analysts to review the lead up to and the aftermath of the poll. This event offers a rare opportunity to hear directly from those involved in or analyzing the country's first comprehensive nationwide independent vote tally, as well as legal experts and analysts who will share their findings and their analysis of the local electoral environment. Participants both in person and online will be provided with opportunity to ask questions to the panelists uh, following the discussion. First, the club would like to thank International IDEA for, for co-sponsoring the event and helping to recruit the best panel of speakers, uh, which includes Dr. Ladawan Tantiwatiya Pitak of PNET, represented by, who is the Secretary General of PNET, and secondly, Kun uh, Rajapong Chamjira Chai Kun, an advocacy officer and political specialist of I-Law, and of course Kun Adisak Limparapatapkit, the head of the Watcher Campaign and also uh, head of the Nation uh, News Organization. And last but not least, Dr. Goto Maya, advisor to the Institute of Human Rights and Peace Studies at Mahidon University. Um, but before we start, I would like to go first uh, to uh, Kunlina Rikila Tamang, the Director of Asia and the Pacific for Interna International IDEA, just to say a few words. Well, thank you. Thank you, Panu, and uh, many thanks to the legendary FCCT Bangkok for co-hosting, uh, co-organizing this event, what happened in Thai elections with us tonight. On behalf of International IDEA, I wish to welcome you all uh, on site and online. It is uh, very good to see so many uh, old and new friends uh, present here tonight. Yeah, my name is Lina Rikila Tamang. I'm director for Asia and the Pacific region at IDEA. Um, just a frequent visitor in this city, otherwise based in Canberra, uh, Australia. And what a time it is to visit and witness the uh, Thailand parliamentary elections. Historic in so many ways. Um, we will no doubt hear some fascinating insights from this panel. But I think it is safe to say that we are witnessing some tectonic political and social shifts on evidenced by the unprecedented voter behavior seen in this election. I should say at the outset that international idea is not observing these elections and never do as an organization. Uh, instead, we train and advise, we provide guidelines and standards on how to observe elections. We are also signatory of both the Declaration of Principles for International Election Observation and the Declaration of Global Principles for Nonpartisan Election Observation and Monitoring by Citizen Organization. And as such, we actively promote and support the work of election observers, domestic and international, upholding these uh, principles. And in, it is for this reason we have partnered with the FCCT in organizing this event uh, tonight. The Declaration of Global uh, Principles describes the processes, monitored, and conditions required for successful nonpartisan elections uh, monitoring by citizens. Who can be considered as a specialized human rights uh, defenders focused on civil and political rights? 
uh, central to achieving genuine uh, elections. This event uh, follows a similar one we had in Manila uh, right after the Philippines elections almost exactly a year ago. Our intention is to provide a platform for international community and media to understand how the electoral process right up to the election day fared in the eyes of election observers who were on the ground interacting with the political parties, uh, with the candidates and uh, with the voters. Earlier today, uh, UNFREL, the Asian Network for Free Elections, uh, had a press conference here at the FCCT and sharing their preliminary findings. And this evening, we are hearing from the independent Thai organizations engaged in observing and analyzing the elections from their very start. Obviously, these elections are not yet over uh, and they can be fully assessed and recommendations made once the Complaints have been uh, addressed and requests for recounts finalized and when the power has been transferred to the new government. But I'd also like to thank our distinguished panelists for their willingness to be here today. Dr. Kotom, an old friend of IDEA, who has for decades tirelessly worked for credible and peaceful elections in, in Thailand including successfully bringing um, together all political parties to agree on campaigning code of conduct under the auspices of the ECT. Dr. Ladawan from PNET, uh, also an old friend of ideas and representing the pioneering generation of election observers from the 1990s, providing really an inspiration to a new generation of uh, election observers. We have Kun Adisak, member of the media community that have formed an alliance of media organization called The Watchers, um, ensuring that the election results are accurately recorded and consolidated. And last but not least, uh, Kun Ruchapong, representing ILO, who at the last minute had to sit in, in place of Kun Yingjip, who has been taken ill. Um, as you may no, ILO is one of the initiators of the coalition of NGOs observing the elections called the People's Network to Monitor Elections. And thank you, Kun Panu, for facilitating this uh, panel. I know these are busy times for you and for your team, and we are grateful for your moderation. Uh, we also extend our thanks to Gwen Robinson, who has been uh, instrumental in the organization of this event and many others with us, including several ones on uh, the democratic struggle our friends in Myanmar uh, enduring. And I think the change people have voted for here in Thailand um, is to have ramifications on democratic developments in Southeast Asia, hopefully also in Myanmar, and hopefully for the better. Wishing us all a very good discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to go, we'd li like to start straight away, and we'd like to go to Dr. Ladawan first on PNET. Can you tell us a little bit about what you see in this historic election, and you know, from, some, from your point of view and, and your observation? Thank you. Uh, very careful to be able to be here. <laughs> to share my point of view on this present election. Uh, I think this uh, very exciting moment, exciting for me and exciting for the people of Thailand, maybe the people of the world also, to see the change of Thailand. When we look back four years ago in 2019, we will see the disaster of the election management. We heard a lot of news of freaking regulation, so many problems. Myself, I working for election commission for 15 years before my retirement. It's my this very extremely disappointed of the present election commission in organizing that uh, 2019 election, general election, because. Thing never happened, happened. Thing should not happen, has been happened. And it's very bad that habit happened. 
So you may wonder how that 2019 election up to this election, what change it made. I would say that from my point of view, from 2019 general election, after that, every year we have election. We have uh, election of provincial administrative in 2020. After that, in 2021, we have municipal election, we have uh, local administrative election, and then we have governor election. Throughout that years, there has been mobilizing effort from the civil society, from the media, from the people that would like to see the change, how we're going to overcome the problem of vote buying. I think vote buying, the rigging, the electorality, the influence over the water is a kind of vicious circle happened in Thailand for many years. You know? I'm working for uh, monitor election almost 30 years. We try very hard how to overcome this obstacle. I have been talking with the voters. What we do, we never know the candidate. We never know the political party. They never talk to us. We never realize we don't have choice. We have to follow our leader. We have to follow. OK, you give me money, I will give you vote, because we have, don't have choice. We have been discussing among the civil society, among the movement, and we feel that we just try to cash up vote buying, sending the dividend of vote buying to the election commission and nothing happened. So I think we come up with another strategy. We think that we have to organize a platform for the people to question and less the question, less the problem to the candidate, to the political party, and see how they're going to respond. How the candidate, how the political party going to respond. And we make the choice in according to that. I'm working with the community council organization, which is under, uh, established under the law. And they have about, every, they have night, almost 90, 99% uh, of uh, their council in every sub-district. We realize this problem. We have discussed, and we said that we have to create a platform. So we try during the provincial administrative organization, not very success. We try again at the municipal election. We try again at the Tambon administration. The last election at the governor, with the cooperation of, not with the cooperation, I may say, it's also the initiative, initiative of Thai public, the Thai PBS. The organization is a certain platform with the connecting of all the civil society network, maybe almost 100 of network that join. They come together with the issue and ask the candidate to respond. And I think it make change of the election of the governor, that the candidate had to respond to the people issue, to the people network, how are you going to solve our problem? Traffic, air pollution, garbage, every problem. How are you going to solve it? And not just the idea, but really how are you going to implement it, which where you get the budget. Details have to come out. And I think this change, the election, the governor election last year has extremely changed the thinking of how the candidate run the election. And I think we see it very clearly at the moment, how people reflect, how people respond to the candidate. I have been talking with the people. Yes, I, I get the money. Yes, 300 baht, 500 baht. They are, I went into the community and said, yes, this party, they are helping us. The leader also very good for us during the COVID. But we think maybe they will, win, they will be the winner at this community. I'm surprised. At that constituency in Bangkok, the party that did not get them, did not buy, we know that they did not give out the money. 
they win. And the winning is, I mean, this is the way we overcome the vicious circle that has been happened in Thailand a long, long time ago. And I think this is the change that happened in Thailand. The way of thinking, the way of political party had to change the way of running campaign, the way of running into the power. They have to come up with the idea, they have to be very stable, they have to have the real member to helping them to work out how the party is being strong. So we keep looking forward to see the future of the political party to be more establishment, to be more stronger. And we're looking forward that political in Thailand will be changed and changed for the better of the people. I think I spent the time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Gabriela Dawan. Thank you for your observation. Um, I think I, I, I want to actually change it a bit. I want to go next to Kun Adisak because, um, you know, on the election night, uh, I myself and I'm sure many of you in this room were, were watching the, you know, TV and following the results. And a lot of the result, a lot of the very quick results comes from Kun Adisak and his um, network of volunteers. This is a, a media first is it the first time on this cycle or the second time? You did it also in governor's election, yeah. Bangkok governor's election. Yeah. So maybe can you tell us a little bit about this? I mean, this is the first time that the media on a national level, you know, join hand and have this network. And you can see that the result is actually quite accurate, mm -hmm. to, you know, and, and much quicker than the election commission. Please, can I just have the floor, Krab? แนวคิดในเรื่องของการรวบรวมเอ่อเครือข่ายหลายๆหลายๆส่วนเข้ามาเพื่อทํางานในการรายงานคะแนนเลือกตั้งครั้งนี้เนี่ยมาจากเลือ
พื่อที่จะพัฒนาแอปพลิเคชันในรายการในการรายงานเรียกว่ารายงานเป็น2อ,องแบบคือ Quick c o u n t คือ Real Time Report กับที่เป็น Final Score ก็คือ Real Time ก็คือนับตามตามที่ขานคะแนนแล้วก็ Final Score คือรวมคะแนนครั้งที่แล้วครั้งเลือกตั้งผู้ว่ากรทมก็พบว่าแอปพลิเคชันที่พัฒนาขึ้นมาเองของของสมาคมทีวีดิจิทัลเนี่ยใช้ได้ดีแต่ปัญหาคือจำนวนอาสาสมัครไม่เพียงพอเพราะตั้งเป้าไว้อาสาสมัครประมาณ 2,500 คนจะเพื่อเพื่อเพื่อ cover ประมาณสัก 8,000 หน่วยเลือกตั้งก็คือ1คนต่อประมาณสัก3 3หรือ4 4หน่วยเลือกตั้งแต่ได้อาสาสมัครแค่ประมาณพันกว่าคนเอง So uh, we start this um, election counting report from the Bangkok governor's election. Um, earlier, four years ago, um, the media's organization and agency also did the collaboration with the election committees to um, do the vote counting report using the election committee's rapid reports application. At that time, we were not collecting the information ourselves, but uh, media act as observers in the polling booths. However, this time, during the Bangkok governor's election, the digital TV and online media providers, I think about 30 new um, agencies, decided that the trustworthiness of the election committee was questionable. Therefore, they decided to pool the resources and funding in order to prepare the real-time quick counting application. So the application can act two folds. The first one is the quick counting. You get the result as you, you go. And the second one is the final score. So um, during the Bangkok governor's election, our digital TV application is functioning well. But the problem was the volunteer. We probably need about 2,500 volunteers. Each volunteer will cover about three to four polling booths. But the actual number of um, volunteers who apply for the vote counting was only a thousand. In the election, the two things are the same. The digital community, the digital community, and the digital community online have been talking about six months ago. We will be able to do how to get the support of the government to cover the nine thousand votes in the election. ครั้งแรกเลยพวกเราก็ไม่ได้เทยอทยานมากที่จะให้คอฟเวอร์ทั้งหมดคิดว่าประมาณสัก 30% ของหน่วยเลือกตั้งน่าจะเลเปอร์เซนต์ได้แต่เมื่อเมื่อได้คุยกับทางไอรอไอรอแล้วก็พันธมิตรหลายหลายส่วนก็มีแนวคิดร่วมกันว่าเมื่อกกตไม่มีประสิทธิภาพในการทําบริหารจัดการเรื่องการรายงานผลคะแนนแล้วก็ไม่มีการทําเรื่องแอปพลิเคชันในการรายงานแบบเรียลไทม์ทางสื่อทั้งสื่อกับทางไอรอก็คิดว่าต้องจับมือกันก็ตั้งเป้าว่าจะต้องหาอาสาสมัคร1 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0คนเพื่อ cover หนึ่งหน่วยเลือกตั้งต่อหนึ่งคนก็เป็นที่มาของการรวมตัวกันของหลายๆหลายๆองค์กรครับ In 2023 election the um, digital media, media TV and the online media um, agency decided that we should cover about 30% of the polling booth um, there are actually like 95,000 polling station We think that 30% would be representative so that we can get information because the election committee did not prepare the real-time vote counting application. But after we talked to other alliance, for example, ILOS, um, we consider that if the election commission do not prepare the application for real-time vote counting, then the media and ILOS, as well as our, our other partners have to um, do it ourselves, and it will require about 100,000 volunteers covering one volunteer per one voting booth. Uh, not here, Kong, Kong, Sama, Kum, Su, Ku, Kong, Tang Media, Nia, Sing, Ti, Lao, Tong, Gan, Ti, Su, Ku, Pon, Gan, Nap, Kanan, Ti, Rail, Ti, Su, Nan, Ku, 
หลังปิดทีเลือกตั้ง5้าโมงเย็นประมาณสัก15นาทีที่จะเริ่มมีการนับคะแนนควรที่จะรายงานผ่านหน้าจอทีวีหรือทางเว็บไซต์ของของสำนักข่าวต่างๆที่ร่วมกันก็คิดว่าออตอนที่คุยกับทางไอรอในทางคุณยิ่งชีพผู้อำนวยการของไอรอก็ได้มีความเห็นร่วมกันว่าต่างคนต่างทำหน้าที่คือมีเดียก็ทำหน้าที่ในการรายงานคะแนนส่วนไอรอก็นำหน้าที่ในการตรวจสอบการเลือกตั้งเป็นหลักโดยที่จะเ,เขียนโปรแกรมหลังบ้านเพื่อจะเชื่อมโยงอาชาสมัครในการทำทำงานร่วมกันเพื่อเพื่อไปถึงเป้าหมายของการรับสมัครอาชาสมัครให้ได้ 10,000 คนที่จะคอฟเฟอร์ให้มากที่สุดตอนนั้นเราตั้งไว้ 10,000 แต่ก็คิดว่าไม่ถึงคิดว่าคิดว่าคงไม่ได้มากเท่าไหร่เพราะได้ถามจากทางไอรอว่าเมื่อปี4ี่ปีที่แล้วได้อาชาสมัครเท่าไหร่ทางคุณยิ่งชีพของไอรอบอกบอกผมว่าได้ประมาณสัก 4,000 คนทั่วทั่วประเทศแต่สื่อเองอ่ะไม่ไม่ได้มีประสบการณ์เรื่องการรับสมัครอาสาสมัครเพราะนั้นก็เลยเลยคุยกันว่าเราช่วยกันหาอาสาสมัครทางไอรอเป็นอาสาสมัครแบบออร์แกนิกส่วนสื่อก็หาอาสาสมัครแบบที่เป็นจัดตั้งก็คือจัดจัดองค์กรต่างๆ And at the time, the media agencies and our media association decided we need the rapid counting result. So therefore, the report should trigger in within 15 minutes after the polling was closed. And there will be a report from the media um, in the website or our news agencies. And I talked to Ying s h i p and he said that the i l a w would prepare the Support system to inspect the vote counting and connect the volunteer to observe the vote counting and also recruit the volunteers. And our media organization will do the media coverage. As um, representative from the media agency and organization, we don't have any experience recruiting volunteer, and we didn't think that we can get 100,000 volunteer. Whereas I law have previous experience in recruiting about 4,000 volunteers national wide. ทางสมาคมชีวิตดิจิทัลก็เลยคิดว่าจะต้องหาเครือข่ายพันธมิตรนอกจากสมาคมชีวิตดิจิทัลสมาคมผู้ผลิตข่าวออนไลน์เราก็นึกถึงสมาคมองค์องค์กรปกครองส่วนท้องถิ่น3สามสมาคมก็คือทางอบตองค์การบริหารส่วนตำบลองค์การบริหารส่วนจังหวัดเทศบาลซึ่งทั้งสามสมาคมเนี่ยก็จะมีเครือข่ายคัฟเฟอร์ทุกทุกหมู่บ้านในประเทศไทยแล้วอีกส่วนหนึ่งก็ได้คุยกับพักการเมืองหลายพักที่จะใช้อาสาสมัครร่วมกันซึ่งพักการเมืองตามปกติก็จะมีคนไปประจำอคอยจับตาดูการนับคะแนนทุกๆครั้งอยู่แล้วนะก็ร่วมมือกันโดยโดยสมาคมทีวีดิจิตอลก็ไม่ได้มีเงินในการว่าจ้างอาสาสมัครอะไรก็คือใช้วิธีในการแลกเปลี่ยนแลกเปลี่ยนอินโฟมิชันแลกเปลี่ยนข้อมูลกันคือสื่อสมาคมสื่อเนี่ยมีระบบในการเชื่อมโยงข้อมูลจากถังข้อมูลกลางไปกับสื่อที่ร่วมกันประมาณ38สำนักข่าวก็จะ provide API ให้กับองค์กรที่มาร่วมคือพักการเมืองพักพักเอ่อพักซึ่งซึ่งได้คุยหลายพักนะได้คุยคุยสักสิบห้าหกพักแต่ได้ความร่วมมือจริงๆประมาณสักแค่สักสามพักก็คือพักเพื่อไทยก้าวไกลไทยสร้างไทยนิดหน่อยรวมไทยสร้างชาตินิดหน่อยก็แลกเปลี่ยนข้อมูลเพื่อให้ให้ให้พวกเขาเอ่อได้ได้ได้คะแนนไปมอนิเตอร์ทั้งสี่ร้อยเขตด้วยเพราะว่าแต่ละพักเนี่ยไม่สามารถที่จะลงอาสาสมัครครบทั้งหมดแต่ก็ในที่สุดก็แต่ว่าก็มีปัญหามีปัญหาก็คือทางกรกตไปนับในเรื่องของค่าใช้จ่ายของของเจ้าหน้าที่ประจำหน่วยเลือกตั้งเป็นของพักการเมืองไม่ได้เป็นของผู้สมัครรวมเลยค่อนข้างจะมีปัญหา
at the time, the recruitment for the volunteer for ILO was organic. Like the people who like to volunteer this, um, register at the application. But our media organization, we organize our volunteer from different resources. We know that our um, all the media agency do not have enough people to cover all the, the polling booth we wanted. So we work with the local administrative organization from the provincial level, sub-provincial level, so that, that we can reach up to the villages. And we also pull resources and observer from political parties using our information sharing database and API. Um, among 38 agencies, um, we have the central API system and we share this system to political parties. I approached like 15 to 16 political parties, but only three parties decided to participate in um, asking their observer to provide us information, namely um, the Move Forward Party, Thai Sang Thai Parties, and Pue Thai Parties. Because all of the um, political party observer cannot also cover it, all of the polling station. And the problem is the election committee commission count these expenses as the political party's expenses. So this is like uh, also included in the expenditures cap for the campaign expenditures. เอ่ออาชาชมักที่อยู่หน้าหน่วยเลือกตั้งก็จะเป็นคนรายงานเข้ามาในในแอปพลิเคชันที่เขียนรวมกันแล้วความร่วมมือ <coughs> อีกอันนึงก็คือเอ่อความร่วมมือกับสถาบันการศึกษาคือมหาวิทยาลัยมหาวิทยาลัยศรีปฐุมที่ที่ใช้เป็นวอลลุ่มวอลลุ่มของว
we pull from 38 media agency, for example, television channels, newspaper, online media agency, but that cover only 50% of what we needed. The rest of the funding, we asked the FinTech Thai Association to conduct the crowdfunding platform to cover the rest of the expenses and with collaboration from other organizations like local administrative organizations and universities to provide other resources. ก็เอ่อผมสรุปอย่างนี้การที่เราทําแบบเนี้ยไม่ได้คิดว่าจะคอเวอร์ได้ทั้งหนึ่งหนึ่งแสนหนึ่งเก้าหมื่นห้าพ
local Thai media we're seeing a uh, very high lead from Move Forward. And this is because the way that the media deployed their network of volunteers. Anyway, we can come back to this. Uh, I would like to go next to Kun uh, Ruchapong from my law. Of course, on the other side of this coin of volunteers and observation is the work of the civil society group, especially I law from not only the election day, but also the, 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 the early election day, the week before, there was a lot of observation, there was a lot of mistakes, there was, there was a lot of errors. Can you give us a little bit about, uh, you know, a summary of, of, of what I law have seen uh, during the, the early votes and, and, and on election day? Okay, so um, let me start with the magic word. The people have spoken in elections. Speaking, they did to the ballots, but also they also took action to ensure that the votes, every vote counts. This elections, I think, is a win for, not only a win for the pro-democracy parties, but it's also a win for the civic campaigns, the civil participation, the public participations that initiate from the people, from the below, and aim to strengthen democracies. As for ILAW, um, we are the, we the NGO um, monitoring elections. For, we have published reports on the, on the chaos four years ago, and this time we collaborate with um, other civil societies organizations and as well as uh, the Thai activists to organize the election observation campaign. The, we call it the vote62.com. So basically, we ask the Thai people, the normal Thai citizens, not normal Thai voters, even students who, not, who may not even have the right to vote yet, to go to polling stations after the poll close at 5 p.m., uh, observe the, the counting process, correct the officials if they're wrong, and then take the pictures of the result back and send it back to our website. So if there are any report of irregularities, we could at least validate the result. To just a brief of four years ago, um, four years ago was, to say that four years ago was a chaos, maybe a, even an understatement, I think for unex unexplainable reasons, the result fluctuated during the election days. So logically the result, if they're going up, they should be up and not down, but then just, some slum and then it go up again. So this, is, this happened for unexplainable reasons. And um, the next morning saw one third of MP candidates have their votes um, reduced, have their tallies reduced for unexplainable reasons yet again. So it is not, su not so surprised that, um, that the people did not seem to trust the ECT this time around. So, what we realized from, from the lesson we learned from the 2019 is that um, we don't have the result from the polling stations. The ECT did not release the result from each polling stations. They only released the result from the district. So we don't, we don't have any way to prove that the, 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 the result that they announced um, days later is correct or not. So that's why we have this um, vote62.com. We actually did this four years ago, but we did not pay any attention to it because we don't think that there might be this kind of problems. So now we um, dedicated all of manpowers, all of our networks, um, we trying to mobilize every people to join this vote62.com. And this time is so different because the level of enthusiasm the people have shown. Um, we received at least 400, okay, sorry. This is the pictures of the people observing the elections. This is the, in the middle of the rain. Um, they bring their own chairs, they bring their own raincoat, they have their own umbrellas. Some of them even have flashlight, um, the hands holding the phones, um, ready to take pictures, or even if, like, if they have to challenge the, the officials, they're ready to search for the laws and um, referencing that to the officials. This is the level of enthusiasm that we see in these elections. This is what happened at midnight uh, in, in Bang Plat where there was a, there was a problem, there was contested um, result. People stay until midnight and they take pictures and they send it back to us to verify the result. So in all, um, and this is 
the, risk, the, the board tabulation board that um, they have to take it back, take the picture back to us. This is what we lack in 2019. We don't have these pictures, and we cannot, we cannot validate the result. So, all in all, um, we have we have at least um, tw 12 million constituency ballots um, sent it back to us. So, at nine party list ballot, we receive um, 4,500,000 5, pictures to our vote 62 website. This is that is from uh, more than 30,000 polling stations, which is about one third of, um, about 30% of all polling stations in Thailand. And if we estimate that at least, there were at least three people um, observing in each polling station that, that in among the 30,000, we could, uh, we could argue that at least 100,000 people joined our com campaign. All day we receive a lot of message. I, myself answer a lot of phone calls um, from, from very active citizens. What is so impressive is that uh, many of our volunteers are elderly. Some are students who uh, were not even eligible to vote. <laughs> there was a story like a 70 years old woman that uh, messaged back to us saying that this is her first time doing this and she wants to leave something behind in this world. And her, her, somehow her daughter managed to steal her iP iPad and message it back to us and tell us how enthusiastic her mom is in these elections. So there were people doing their own videos, um, promoting our observation campaign on TikTok. Um, there were people kind of like Facebook Live, the counting process, and um, thousands of people would join in that live and, and say, this is wrong, blah, blah, something like that. So it's impressive. Um, I myself very impressed. Um, people did their own research, and um, they were able to argue and correct the officials. And I want to say, as a disclaimer, is that we sympathize with the officials, with the local officials, because they have to walk up about uh, like 3 a.m. set set the stage polling station, set up the polling stations to prepare to open the polling station by like 8 a.m. They have to stay until like midnight until the, pro the whole process is over. So mistake could happen. So that's why we, as the volunteer, uh, we could go and help them um, to work and to ensure that everyone counts. So from the time the poll closed at 5 p.m. to about 8 a.m., the results from ECT were coming in, I um, have to say, very slowly. But our report were quicker. So this is... Um, the website of our report. This is entirely reported by normal Thai citizens. Um, the ECT promised to release 90% 90 90 of the result at 11 p.m., but by 10 p.m., um, only 40% of the result were coming in. So at midnight, only about 80% of the result were reported in the ECT website. The pace, I have to say, is as low as four years ago. But this time, we have people lining up in, the f in front of the polling stations. So that's the good thing about these elections. Um, similarly, also unlike 2019, we, because we had volunteers, we were, about, we were able to learn the mistake made by the local officials. Some documents containing necessary information were missing. Observers were refused entry or um, filming the, pro the, the counting process. And some of the tallies are wrong. But people corrected them in time, and we, I, we could estimate that a lot of votes were saved from these volunteers. So I think it is fair to, to, to express my thanks to um, volunteers for every Thai citizens. I think many of you might go observe um, Thai elections uh, nearby your, your, your residence, and you might encounter some of our volunteers. We, um, we don't know every one of them because there were 100,000 of them, but they were very, very active citizens. Um, what we did was we only provide platform and information on what they, can, what they can do and what they cannot do to the Thai citizens. But it's the Thai people with a sense of democracies that makes this happen. So this is not to say that the EZD has done a good job, has done a good job, 
They refused to release the information of the location of polling stations nationwide, making our life more difficult. We have to ask people to um, filling out their own polling stations so we, in order to have all the name of the polling stations. The local official definitely were not provided with sufficient trainings. We could see that on the early voting days um, where officials put down the wrong zip code on the envelopes. There also re a report that the Thai postal service will not be able to deliver, deliver at least uh, 300,000 envelopes due to the handwriting of, of the local officials that's not readable. And um, the, this fact was con later contested by the ECT saying that only 10,000 envelopes were affected, but affected nonetheless. Um, we also, right now, we also have a case, many cases of contested result in, among, in, in, in many provinces. For example, in, uh, in the 10th district of Chonburi, mm -hmm. where there were about 5,000 votes um, counted more than casted. The case is now in the ECT for the recount, so it's up to them to, to order the recount. And if you follow um, the ECT Facebook, they have said, they set up an anti, called anti-fake news centers. I have to say that it has, it has done very little to show up the, the public trust for the ECT, because apart from the head, a big headline calling the information fake and a threat of legal actions, it contained little explanation as to why the information was fake in the per first place. Given the low trust among the public, um, the aggressive nature, the stance of the ECT in, in, in these anti-fake news centers does little help to, to, to gain the public trust. In the case where the officials like writing down the wrong zip code, the ECT did not provide the exact numbers of the problematic ballots and the process of how they amend the issues. So I have to say that um, the the key, key things to improve for the ECT is still um, accountability and transparencies. I think people, the Thai people now are so energized by the direct experience with the democratic process, especially when they have to stay until midnight to watch the counting process and know that this is a hard earned victory for them. And this is why I think this, is, this explains the anger that is now exploding after learning that the senators refused to vote with the majorities, the clear majorities. So the next step for us is to validate the information we, we have and urge the ECT to release the, result as, release the official result as fast as possible so that um, the, the process of democratically forming the government could proceed properly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So now you have it. Uh, the, the side from the, the civil society, you know, this time scrutinizing, of course, uh, sort of the the validity of the vote and and, and possible fraud, and you know, we'll remain to be seen how the ECT will react to these uh, these actions and and reports, of course. And it is very helpful to us reporters. Uh, Actually, both ILO and the Media Alliance have uh, been very helpful to, to us uh, and, and, and a refreshing change to, the, to observing Thai election. So lastly, um, I want to go to Ajahn Kothom for uh, his insight into sort of the, the election, sort of, you know, uh, things leading up to the election and, and sort of looking ahead uh, after this historic result, um, you know, after the people have spoken. Ajahn uh, Kothom Kap, are we ready to, to start, sir? I've stuck with the uh, technologies. <laughs> we have some technical difficulties, apparently. But, uh, okay, first, uh, do you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Uh, I have prepared a presentation in three parts. Don't worry, it will not be too long. The first part is about before the election day. A coalition of NGOs succeeded in inviting about 
29 political parties to sign two important documents. We have a signing ceremonies attended by the media and uh, well covered. And there were few witnesses as well. The first document is the code of conduct for electoral campaign. Not to use violence, uh, not to incite uh, hatred and so on. But importantly, there were two annexes. So, uh, I would like it to be connected to my computer, but it doesn't work, so I don't know how to do. Uh, the one of the annex is about the code of conduct or the use of social media. This is an innovation for some aspect. The second annex is about, I cannot remember exactly the title, but nice campaign for everyone, including gender, uh, LGBT and so on, you see, as well. So the second index also is an innovation. And after the signing of the Code of Conduct, the political parties also signed another important document. Namely, they pledge what they will do after the election. First, they will form they agree to form only majority government. It means that they will not get along with the senators to have the necessary votes. First, they will have the majority of House members at the later, let's see. Also, they pledge to integrate their policies. This is what they are doing today, at this time. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, it, uh, it came on the screen. Thank you. Second, they pledge to consolidate their, or integrate their policies before going on uh, to form the coalition. The third pledge, there are many more, but the third, I will stop at that. Saying that, they will, as soon as possible, seek a referendum leading to a new drafting, a new constitution be drafted. Okay, this is before election day. Election proper. I would like to explain a little bit about the system we use that I named as mixed members parallel system. This system was used in 2001. And then in between, we had two more constitutions. <laughs> and we changed uh, the system. The last one we used was in 2019. and could be called mixed member uh, proportional system. Not parallel, but proportional, with a lot of uh, confusion. Uh, during the compilation or decision to uh, say who is winning, who was losing. Okay. This is the system. What I would like to give you as a remark is that this is the first time that a party not affiliated with Thaksin Chidavad that won the election. The election since 2001, you see, the ele general elections were won by tax in camp, so to speak. This time it's, we call it move forward or Kao Krai, who won this election. So I shall say, you see, that few decades ago, the election system was what I call pork barrel system. You see, Thaksin innovated what I would call policy oriented campaign. And he was successful, so he won successive general elections. 
But this time around, the wind of change, the wind of change came. And parties still stick with the old method. They campaigned about giving more and more to the voters. I will give you this uh, advantage. I will raise the minimum wage. I will give a pension to elders. I will take care of the handicapped. So many promises based on what we call mouth. Where is mouth? Mouth and stomach. This is a Thai expression. It means some very concrete that you can eat. An edible policy. But the chain said, no, this time we want to be based more on ideology. We want democracy. We want political reform. Only Move Forward Party realized that and took the challenge. A little bit different from all other parties. And this was the winning strategy. Because, you see, the use of social media as well as the sentiment of the youth that who were fed up with the rhetoric of the conservative. They took power about nine years ago, saying that they will start a reform. They wrote many articles in the Constitution that they will do this, 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 this kind of reform with next to zero achievement. So, Young people say, we did reform. Oh, oh sorry. Not this one. This one. I will give you a picture of the result. I make a distinction between party list result and district uh, vote. Party list. Sorry, I like to step. You can notice how many votes you see. Over party 40 million. Per time only 10.8. Big difference. And so on. And the third party 4.7. Fourth party 1.1 billion. The others did not even get some get only half a billion. You can see, you see, that this is a landslide. Because poor Thai always say that they will achieve a landslide, but they were taken over by move forward. Unexpectedly, they didn't announce any landslide, they just campaigned. But the results were in their favor. So there is a strange phenomena. The strange phenomena is that if you look at those, what shall I say, leader of the party list, there are six leaders who coming from six different parties, completely unknown. I wonder why they want. I, I found out that. They belong to political parties who draw a number. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that's it. If you are lucky enough in drawing the number, you are entitled to have one MP. That is not election. It's, just, it's a kind of God uh, given or something like that. It's luck. Why? My guess is that there are many people who don't agree with some party, but they are engaged in voting for the candidate of the party because of some factors. I give you the opportunity to guess. And the voter who don't want to mark any party, just mark randomly, number one, number two, or number three, up to number six. So all the six parties ranking by number, one, two, three, four, five, six, want one seat from the party list. That is very strange. I don't know whether this happened somewhere else or not. Now, you come to the district. And you can see the discrepancies. Normally, 
the popularity should be reflected on the number of district seats. In fact, it's not so. The Move Forward Party won less district seats than they would have entitled to, given the 14 billion of vote they got by the party list. Why? The same applies to Rom Thai Sak Chat Party. But if you look at the other group of parties, especially two parties, the Poop Jai Thai and the other one, to the lesser extent, the Palang Pracharat, those won very few percentage of popularity, party list wise. But they won a lot of district seats. Why so? So there are many factors why people choose a person rather than a party or choose a party rather than a person. We can divide this into two categories. And remind you, even Chuan Lik Pai, who always talk against vote buying, admits that Move Forward Party did not buy any vote this time around. Okay, I move more quickly. How about the performance of the ECT? First, I would like to congratulate, you see, the people who work very hard on that election day. We always criticize them for their shortcomings, but we also have to acknowledge and give them some, at least, moral support. And I think, as we may acknowledge, that the report informal re of informal results was more or less correct. There is no manipulation. However, the ECT commissioners themselves, they don't communicate. <laughs> Give you an example. Coming near to the election day, they say, okay, goodbye. We are going to on a study tour. Wow. <laughs> what does it mean? <laughs> but in fact, it was not study tour. It's only in Thai that misled the word in Thai, misled the people, the public. It's no need to watch study tour. In fact, they went to visit embassies to encourage and acknowledge the work of the embassy staff, you say, to provide uh, election facilities to the Thai people living abroad. You may agree or disagree. Yeah. Never mind. A serious problem did come out. On the advance vote, they put ballots in envelope. And the marking of the address, you see, on the envelope was not correct sometimes. So there are a certain number of ballots we don't know to which district they belong. It's kind of lost ballot. The post office say there are a certain number, you say 100,000 or whatever. Election commissioners say, no, 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 much less. We don't know exactly how many lost ballots are there. My guess is that they should count, you see, in, that, in those envelopes, the political party vote, because it doesn't belong to any particular district. However, they cannot count the district vote because they don't know which district <laughs> it applies. But the difference will tell you how many lost ballots are there. And in case of some district where the difference between the winner and the next is too small, the ECT should consider some action. I will not tell them. They should consider themselves. I think that this election, as mentioned by other speakers, is the occasion to do some change or reform in our political system and also in the dealing with some economic and social policies. I am encouraged, I discussed with the, my friend, you see. Some of them went to the police station, why? Because their daughters, you see, start telling their parents, okay, bye-bye, Papa, I'm going to the police station, but it's closed. Why did you need to go? 
I need to go to observe the counting, spontaneously, and they get organized among themselves. In addition to uh, <laughs> some volunteers that are not registered to, to, to the system you have. And I think this enthusiasm is very important because they care for their vote and they don't trust too much the election commission. That's it. After the election, what will happen? Double things will happen. Now six parties having 310 APs or about 62% of the total. Uh, and S is there, you see, House of Representatives, so many representatives. Now they are discussing about consolidating their policies. The next step after that should be to communicate what they are thinking, not only to the public. Moreover, they need to communicate also with the senators because the number of the vote needed to select the next prime minister is seven, uh, three, three, 376 votes. They are 66 votes short. Maybe the Democrat Party will vote for them. Maybe subsidators, but that's for sure. Subsidators start see, complaining this and that. They don't like progressive ideas. However, I am optimistic. There are time to take over and to take appropriate action. The process cannot be stopped. Other, otherwise, we are doomed. And even the conservatives, they don't like that kind of scenario. I think that young people do care for their future. Not less, not more than old people like myself. And then, the role of elders is not to put unsurmountable obstacles to them. It's their future. As they say, future forward. And I go to my last slide. Mr. Dukruga, who is the Deputy Prime Minister, not very much liked by, by my friends around. <laughs> he said something the other day, two days ago, quoting a Thai saying that I make a very free translation. Nice work if you can get it. And you can get it if you try. Nobody of my generation remember this song anymore. <laughs> King and I. <laughs> I put amicably. This is in the Thai saying. If you try nicely, gently, you will get it. And this is an advice that for those who are trying to form a new government, I take this advice and I wish them a good success. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Overchan Kotom. I guess we are moving on to our uh, Q&A session. We have about uh, 15 to 20 minutes. So for those of you who want to ask questions, uh, there's a microphone at the back of the room. Please uh, identify yourself and uh, say where, who, who, to whom your question addressed to. And also, please keep it to just questions and not a long statement. Thank you. If there's no uh, any talk, uh, may I? Sure, please. Yes, uh, I I just like to add to uh, the election campaign. Actually, I missed a very important point that how the uh, com uh, election campaign that move change for the Thai politics. Uh, this is very important because I got the idea from idea. Hackathon is the method has been used in Indonesia. You told me, and Andy told me a long time ago. And it has been implemented in Thailand for this election by Thai PPS. They organized a very, uh, well, a very important event that they asked the people from all networking to come together for 48 hours brainstorm the idea, what is the issue, what is the solution, what is the alternative police, public policy that the political party have to respond. 
they they spending 48 hours no, non-stop. And after that, they ask the head of the political party, the candidate, to respond. The issue that uh, less by all this, maybe more than 100 of networking of several issues, environment, uh, from all kinds of issues, student, women, uh, tribal, disability, human rights, democracy, uh, freedom expression, all issues, even the military issue. And at the end, they organize the air, uh, the on-air kind of channel, on-air platform, after. And this has been broadcasting widely two, three weeks before the election day. I think this is a kind of attempt that try to stimulate people to be more conscious on how they have to vote, not for the money they are getting for, but what is the solution, what is the best policy that will affect their life. And I think we, we see some, some results from that. Just like to add that. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Zwan. Please, sir. Thank you, Karina. I'm a club member. Before the previous election in 2019, we had Kuhn Tanaton from the former Future Forward Party here discussing the upcoming election. And one of the comments I remember him making was he had a lot, he accepted that Future Forward had a lot of support from the, the youth of Thailand. And his advice to them was to persuade their parents and their family about the arguments about why they should vote for Future Forward and why they should vote for the change. So um, my question to the panel is, did that happen in this election? Obviously there was a strong youth vote supporting the, the Move Forward movement, but have the youth convinced their parents and the family and the relations to also vote for a radical change in Thailand. If, if they have, it's a good thing for Thailand because it means this election isn't just a one-off. If the youth have convinced the parents and the older generation that change is needed, then it's a permanent change and it'll happen for this election, for this government and for the next government. So the question to the panel is, do they believe that there is a generational change as well as the youth impact on, um, on the Move Forward Party? Are the older generation also convinced that uh, a structural change is needed in Thai politics? <laughs> Thank you. It's a, it's a very difficult question for <laughs> um, observer and such, but maybe... Anyone who would like to take on the yeah. question? I can t um, let me start with this before uh, my, panel, my fellow panelists could add. Um, the move forward this time is so different from the last time. Last time you could argue that most of the supporters are young and um, young, younger generations, but now they, I think they have one of the most demographically diverse supporters ever. Um, if you see in the Thaksin era, the, the, the divine is the regions, the north, e the north, the northeast, and the south, right? But now, you could, if you see the party list, the, the second ballot, the, the number of the second ballot, the move forward actually won in the north. And they also, like, they also have like half of the votes in the south. In the south, the, the traditional stronghold of the Democrat, the traditional stronghold of the conservative, they are now switching to the move forward. So what could happen? What, why is this phenomenon happen? Well, I think we could make use of some scholars in the futures. But now we could say that they, they have kind of break that gener generational divide that people believe in back in the protest two or three years ago. But now it's so diverse. And I, my mom. They, uh, she voted for move forward. She voted for Democrat all her life, but now she switched to move forward. Um, there's a, there's a. If you watch TikTok in in Thai TikTok, there's there's a tsunami of of um, you, of Thai people generating their own videos about move forward, about they're trying to persuading their parents. Um, 
there's a like stories on on social media um, of people asking their parents to vote for move forward for their futures. Please do not vote for the uncle again. <laughs> I will not survive in this country for the next 20 years if you vote for him again. There's story like that. So I think the result is pretty clear cut and, and um, only in, in Thailand that a, a clear majority MPs could not form a government and this is kind of a normally not a democratic government. Uh, from my point of view, I mean, I observe the people, the water, especially the ages one, I mean, my, my age, people who, uh, even the sick one, you know, even the handicapped one, they try very hard to go through work. I have been talking for, with some of them, and I think, I agree that uh, the influence of the uh, moving forward party that they are targeting with the young and try the young to pursue their parents and their family also one of the factor. But I think one of the main factor is that because people want to see the solution, people want to have the clear picture of how the future will be, and this happened because the candidate of move forward, but they can express, can explain very clearly. And they have many speakers who can speak very clearly what move forward will do for the people if they get the elect. Another important factor is that uh, the people, the move forward party have been working very hard for four years. During the parliament, during the debate, concept, during the debate, during the, uh, Alina? Central debate. Uh, central debate. They can clearly show up. They can clearly indicate the problem of the present government, the problem of all the issue. And the last one of the, the government at the time, I don't know, or just speak out very briefly, never explain the issue that led by the opposition party during those parliament sessions. They look down, they overlook the people because there was time. If you're going to the community, people are watching television, people are following the debate in the parliament for four years. And I think this also motivates and mobilize the people how they look at the move forward party, how consistency, how clearly that this young group of people want to help the country. I think that there are several factors. And yes, the young factor also, the stronghold for this change. Thank you. Anyone else who want to? you want to say something? In <coughs> the มีการจัดดีเบตทางโทรทัศน์ทางออนไลน์มากที่สุดมากที่สุดจากการที่จากการคุยกับเพื่อนๆที่อยู่ในวงการเนี่ยก็ส่วนใหญ่ก็จะติดต่อเชิญตัวแทนของพรรคการเมืองมาดีเบตประมาณ10พรรค8ถึง10พรรคพรรคเก้าไก่อันนี้ต้องชมวางแผนได้ดีมากไม่เคยปฏิเสธไม่เคยลังเลว่าจะส่งใครมาชัดเจนแต่พักอื่นๆเนี่ยก็จะจะไม่แน่นอนว่าตกลงจะมีใครมาหรือเปล่าหรือบางทีรับปากแล้วก็ไม่มาไม่มาหรือก็จะส่งแต่คนนี้มาไม่เอาคนอื่นมาอะไรอย่างเงี้ยแต่ก้าวไกลอ่ะมีผมคิดว่ามีการวางแผนแต่ละแต่ละช่องแต่ละช่องควรจะส่งใครไปเพื่อให้เหมาะกับออเดียนส์ของของบีเดียของแต่ละช่องของแต่ละออนไลน์แล้วก็คนรุ่นใหม่ที่อยู่ใน TikTok ก็ก็เอาคอนเทนต์เหล่านี้ไปไปตัดต่อสั้นๆๆๆแปดสิบเปอร์เซ็นของของคอนเทนต์บน TikTok ในช่วงช่วงสองสัปดาห์ที่ผ่านมาเป็นเรื่องของก้าวไกลหมดเลยซึ่งซึ่งจะต่างจากในในไลน์ไลน์กรุ๊ปที่ส่วนใหญ่ก็จะเป็นกลุ่มอของคนที่ที่เบบี้บูม
ในไลน์เพราะฉะนั้นสองแพลตฟอร์มเนี่ยก็จะต่อสู้กันไลน์ก็จะมีเต็มไปด้วยเรื่องของ Baby b o o มของ Gen X กับ Baby b o o มของ TikTok ก็จะเป็นของของพวก Gen Y หรือ First Water เป็นส่วนใหญ่ก็จะก็อันนี้ก็จะทำให้เห็นว่าการเข้าถึงแพลตฟอร์มของของสื่อเนี่ยมันจะต่างกันมันผลผลต่างกัน From a media personnel point of view, I think this general election is most um, organized, most political debates ever. We also contact like then the media also contact eight or ten political parties. But I also would like to show my appreciation and <laughs> to move forward parties. As far as I have heard, they never refuse an invitation to a debate, and they send diversified debaters for audience on television or like online media channels. And the contents from this debate are echo in TikTok, where young people make short clips of move forward parties debaters and share it on short on TikTok as a short video clip. And you can see, in the last two weeks. Before the election, 80% of the TikTok have been taken or dominated by the move forward parties content. Whereas in live application, the content are mostly dominated by boomers and Gen X. So you can see two battlefield live for like older generations, Gen X or boomer, and TikTok for like Gen Y or third waters. And that would be my observation. Thank you. Ajahn Kotong. We usually divided, divide generations. I belong to generation called silent generation, too old. And then there are baby boomers. These two generations form the majority of the voters. And when you get younger, you are then moving from uh, X to Y, uh, sorry, from Z. I'm confused. To so X, Y, Z. Okay. X, Y, Z. Boomer, X, y, Z. Boomer, <laughs> then the y, younger Z. are the Z generation. Yeah. They are not the majority. But I guess about 80% of them vote for the future, for the change. But they are small proportion of the electorate. The majority belong to, I don't know, silent or baby bloomer or Gen Z. Gen Z. Mm. Obviously, among the figure you have here, oh, not anymore. <laughs> Sorry, eight, uh, 14 million vote for move forward. So 80% of Z doesn't count for 14 billion. So necessarily, there are other generations who vote mm. for mm. move forward. It is 14 billion. How about this? 4.7. <laughs> the conservatives. Mm. I guess also a lot of them vote conservative. But not all. If all of them vote conservative, there will be a bigger figure than that. So the wind of change spread over generations. More for the young, less for the old, but still for every generation alike. Thank you. Thank you. We, we have a couple of... Uh, Comments, uh, actually, question, also a question from our online um, viewers. So first from Peter Everett, um, Thailand Speaks, well done to all voters. Great to hear about all the hard work done in the background to ensure a democratic process. So that's a credit to, to all of you here. Um, the question is from Julian Spindler. Let's cut to the chase. Uh, I guess this is to the, all, all the panelists. Let's cut to the chase. Sunday's vote represents an existential threat to the ruling elite. Will the Senate listen to the people's voice? Uh, any one of you want to take this question? The role of the Senate and, you know, in the up, upcoming votes? 
Well, <laughs> it's the questions that we all want to know, right? <laughs> and I want to know too. Um, but but let me let me speak this way. This is the this is the most landslide victory in a Thai election ever. At the height of Thaksin, um, back in 20, 2005, that was considered the most landslide victory in Thailand. Thaksin back then won 377 seats, but for, for the popular vote, uh, Thaksin won 61%. But now, if you combine, um, move forward, the, the, the old opposition parties, the former opposition parties, the move forward, the poor Thai and all the lesser parties, all the add up would be 70%. This is, this is, as my uh, fellow panelist says, this is a win of change. This is a side guys of this Thailand era. But for, the, but for the Senate, I think we are now in a kind of like a game of chicken. You stare at me, you stare at you, and who blink first will lose, <laughs> right? So the move forward insists that they have a clear majority and they should lead the coalition's government. This fact is accepted by Pua Thai and, and lesser former opposition parties. But if you combine all the seats together, they would make up three, 310. In any democratic functioning country, we will have a government by now, <laughs> right? But, it's still not, but in this country, 310 seats would still not be enough to outboard the Senate who was so like adamant against um, the move forward. So the move forward also made a very bold move to, to not invite Pum Jai Thai to the coalitions, even, even if doing so would mean that they could defeat the Senate. That's, that's a sign that they kept the promise to, to, to the voters. So, but why is the game of chicken? Because why the move forward is relying on public pressure to and anger to force the Senate to vote in line with the majorities. They themselves also face pressures from not, be, not, from not be, be, being able to form the government as like time drags on, making the prospect of having Pum Jai Thai in the coalitions more enticing for, for the public that uh, did not tolerate, do not tolerate the, the political vacuum. So if the senators do not blink, we might have a like kind of stack hunt problems where different coalitions in which um, the move forward is not in the driving seat or isolated might emerge. So for the orange and red coalitions to succeed and democratic process respect, I think the two leading parties, the Pum Jai Thai, uh, not the Pum Jai, sorry, the Pua Thai and um, the move forward must stick together. Um, and respect that principle, the principle that the, the winning coalition should form the government. Deviating from, from these principles will entail huge political cost in the next elections. If you recall Thai history, this is what happened to the Dem Democratic parties when back 10 years ago, more than 10 years ago, when they refused to play by the rule and um, have a coalition government in a military, military camp. So, the slump in the polls among parties that vote for Payut has shown that, that the voters will punish you if you, if you did not respect the democratic process. Anyone else on the Senate? Okay. Any more questions at the back? Uh, may I oh, please. add some, some more comments? Uh, Pinet uh, just a few days ago has issued a statement to uh, have asking the Senate to vote for uh, the government that has majority in the House of Representatives. However, in my, myself, my own opinion, uh, we, are not, we are not going to support to have any more Senate in the next constitution because we feel that we don't need any more Senate the House of Representatives is sufficient enough why we need Senate in the future of the Constitution going to be draft only one. So I myself campaign that 500 members of uh, par uh, Parliament, House of Representatives, should support 
the prime minister, the the the, uh, the Jai, move forward party that has uh, the name for his uh, prime minister as a. So, I believe that the member of parliament could be the key to help mobilize, to help support, and that it could be the justification for the House of Representatives not to depend on the Senate voice. Just my idea. Thank you. Please, Mr. Paul Williams, Associate Member. I was watching BBC News about a week ago when Jonathan Head was reporting on, on Thai election campaigns, and I was surprised to find he was allowed half a minute to talk about Per Thai's campaign. And as soon as he started mentioning uh, Move Forward, it was cut off, as it often is when Jonathan Head talks about Thai politics. <laughs> I talked to a few friends about this, and it sort of seemed to support, the r there was a rumor that uh, Per Thai was going to do a deal with the, the then current government. Did the campaign do you think that rumor was true? And if so, did that cost her time, a lot of votes, and helped move forward? Thank you. So the question is about the, the possible per tie deal, the murky, uh, unclear nature of this possible deal that, that may have cost per tie the election. Any, any comment from the panelists? Ajahn, please. We don't know. <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> in, in the other slides, you see, I show you that for two parties, they should have bought more district seats, but they did not. It shows that they are not very keen on vote buying, if you like by saying the poor Thai is balanced. And there are two other parties who want more district seat that they should considering that popularity, and your guess is yours. <laughs> okay, if there's no more question, I'm gonna have my final question, because um, we have all here at Apavajan Kotom, all three of you were part of this very vast network to scrutinize the vote, which is very important and arguably quite, quite you know, raise the standard, I guess, of, of elections. But of course, we now reach another phase, formation of government and so on with the, change, with the wind that has changed. We have seen in the last 20 years rows of independent agencies, whether it's national, you know, uh, the election commission, the anti-corruption commission, the constitutional court, all these extra judicial, uh, all these extra constitutional organization and their power to kind of create deadlocks in Thai politics. How do you take this alliance of <laughs> media and civil society to the next level to, to monitor the work of these things beyond um, you know, the election? I, I, I would like to basically ask the two of you, <laughs> media and, oh, I mean, all, all of you, the media and civil society, I mean, how do, I think I law sort of doing that already in, in many ways. You want to go first? Yeah, please. Okay. Um, okay, I can, I can go first. So, one of our missions for the past eight years is to monitor the NCPO, the, the military government. Um, we document the draft constitutions back then when no one cared about the constitution because we can't speak about a referendum. We can speak about voting, rejecting the referendums. So um, we have been monitored all of them. One of the solutions that, that we know that um, actually, <laughs> let, me t let, me, let me have this story. So one of my colleagues um, say, that, say on, the, on the media that um, the, the ECT came from, appoint, were appointed by the NCPO, and then the ECT put up a, a newsletter on, on their Facebook page saying that this is fake news because they come from the constitutional process, but it's a, but it's a constitutional process that's drafted by the, the military, right? So the ECT itself came from the Legislative Assembly, which is appointed by the NCPO. <laughs> and they have at least three voters um, f on, on the ECT itself until they have their seven um, board members. 
that happened as well with with the national anti-corruption missioners, happened as well with uh, the constitutional courts, and in fact. At um, next next week, 23rd of, of, of this month, the ECT will have uh, the the Senate the Senate will hold a special um, sessions because they will vote on who will who will become the next who will fill the fill the vac vacancy on the ECT and the anti commission uh, mm -hmm. corruption commissioners. And you know what? These these meetings they are all secret, so there's no. Uh, public records. There is no live streaming. What you know is that the final result that who 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 got the, who got the job on who got rejected. And given given the political circumstances that we are in now, you could expect that in that meeting, in the sessions, they will talk about who vote for the prime ministers. This this is the key that that I think. We should know, and and the the people of Thai of Thailand should know, and um, I think I think I think the the way out for this is that to draft a new constitutions, and wipe out all these independent agencies, and um, create a new proce recruiting process that is more democratic, and and have more t transparencies. Thank you. Anyone else? On <laughs> no need. Chang Tom, you want a last word, sir? Uh, I, I did not understand the question, but I will give some answer. <laughs> when the wind blows, there are those who construct a wall, and others try to put up wind, wind bill or whatever, to generate electricity. If the wind is too strong, it will destroy both. So be careful. We are talking about very entrenched powers that be. You cannot invent a tsunami. The tsunami will sweep everything. But we are talking about new constitution that will go on its own space, you see. Many obstacles, many years, maybe two or three or more years to achieve that. And hopefully, the new constitution will be a kind of consensus. That will be achievement for the reform. We cannot say tomorrow, change come, no. That will blow out everything, including the useful one. Did I answer your question? Maybe not, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Kap. Oh, Ajahn. I'm, I'm sorry, I've been, oh. I am Martin from this uh, public uh, I just wanted to ask, it's indirectly connected to the election. So say, for example, that two forward the Polish can actually form a government. How difficult or how challenging is it going to be, you know, for them to power um, in this system? You know, the administration, civil service, uh, could we talk about that? Any particular panelists you want to? Um, so, I, I'm not I'm not an expert in in governing. You can see, but I let, let me say it this way. Um, the the lesson from 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 Bangkok Governor Chachar, who is so hugely popular, but when he's in power, he faces the stagnant, highly, extremely dubious, um, the Thai civil servants, the Thai bureaucracies. So, if so, that's the challenge that 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 the new government have to overcome is that how to manage the bureaucracies, the Thai bureaucracies, which so huge and so hugely, hugely, um, influential, and on the legis le legislations, I think um, there's still the senators. And you still have to pass the senators in order to pass any le legislation. Le legislations. Otherwise, your bill will get stalled. Even though you could pass in the end, that would take years for, for any bill to, to, to materialize in, in the law. So the two aspects that they have to overcome. And the third one is to manage the coalitions. Because you, could, you, sh you know that um, the, the gap, the discrepancies between the move forward and Puerto is not that big. It's like 10 seats. So Pertai remain very influential, and how they manage that would, would be 
um, crucial to the surviving the, the surviving fate of, of the new government. Okay. Uh, one more question. or not, right, something like that. But uh, I would like to ask all of you to try to think about the why card. Uh, in public policy, we have something that we call why card, the W-I-L-D-C-A-R-D, which means that something that we may see that it could not happen, but it can happen for real. And then if it happens, it can change the whole situation. Um, there must be or there might be someone or something that is even more powerful than senators in Thai politics. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean so if I would like if I would uh, kindly ask all of you uh, panelists to think about what could be the why card for Thai politics, you know. Could could you please come up with why card, please? Yeah. That's, that's my question. Okay. Well, <laughs> up to you guys <laughs> to answer this question. <laughs> Winds of change. <laughs> I, will let, I, I will let the elder do the work here. I am excited by your question. So <laughs> I think you try to incite us to say something, but I refuse to do so. I mean, if, if no answer on that, there's a, there's a related question online from um, uh, former ambassador, uh, Australian ambassador to Thailand, James Wise. He said that, you know, why is there so much, is there too much focus on the senators? Shouldn't the focus be on the elected uh, government, you know, current government, future opposition MPs, whether they support on the principle of voting uh, to approve a PM without needing the Senate? And if they don't support that position, why so? I mean, he, he's just putting out that sort of provocative question. We are seeing some pressure, I, I guess, uh, right now. I think the Democrats' party have spoken up. I think some of the government parties also have spoken up. Um, any thought uh, on, on from the panelists on this issue? Well, Remember that they signed up the pledge. Mm. That's all I can say. I think the two parties, if I remember covering the story, they did not turn up. Oh, right? Most of the parties, except the two the UTN based and parties. and Palang Pasharat party didn't turn up to, the, to sign. Only two. Yeah. <laughs> so did not sign. if we uh, can have, you see, uh, those parties who before already said that they, don't, they want to stop the influence of the Senate, and this is the time to do so. But we are not forcing anyone. They can think about themselves, by themselves. Okay. If there's no further comment, I oh, okay, Phil, please. We keep dragging on and on. I know, you've got eight more minutes, haven't you? <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, um, actually my question, and sorry it's so late, is actually the opposite of what Ambassador Wise just asked about. And it's probably for um, the Ajahn, um, as opposed to the election watchers, which is for many of us who are, um, you know, even long-term residents here, but outsiders, the Senate and the Senate's political sort of inclinations is a bit of a black hole, and we just, you know, refer to them as junta appointed, military appointed. We're seeing a few of them making comments, but I would just be very interested, and as I say, it's probably for um, the Ajahn, if there's any feeling about how the Senate might split and whether there are enough senators who might back and uh, move forward per Thai coalition. Are they a monolithic block or are they thinking about their futures? Are they thinking about the fact they're not going to be senators in a couple of years? Are some of them actually more liable than others to have some independent thinking and back this um, putative coalition? Uh, because 
you know, from the outside, I don't really have a grasp of how the Senate breaks down on that sort of issue. Thanks. Any comments? If, if not, then I... I okay, to be honest, I don't know what the Senate thinks. Um, I watched them for years, but especially when, when they like debate, that when they have a constitutional de amendment debate, I watched them for years. They, for the past four years, there has been about six constitutional amendments to get rid of the, the, the Senate powers to elect a prime ministers, and it failed every, it, everyone failed in the hand of the Senate because the constitutional amendment required at least one third of the Senate to agree to, even though you have the majority of you have 500 MPs voting in a block, you could start st you could couldn't still pass the, the constitutional amendment. And there has been rumors that um, Prayut has 100 senates, Prayut had 150, or in any numbers. But, and we still don't know. Uh, but what we could know is that one of the senates, the senators that became quite notorious in, in the news in recent day, he, before the elections, I think he, he see the win, kind of. He, he, ba he banged on um, Pua Thai. He said that he would vote with the majority. But then when the, ele when the election result came out, he said that, no, I'm not going to vote for the Move Forward Party. And he's tried to drive the, the, the line for the Senate and for the establishment, I think, is to try to drive the wedge between the Move Forward and Pua Thai. And right now, you're seeing right-wing media sharing toxin. This is unbelievable 10 years ago. But now they're so scared of Move Forward more than Pua Thai. So, you live in Thailand in a very good time to see. Uh, move forward, one in the south, this, and um, Thaksin lose, lost the first election, his first election ever. I think some analysis sorry, remind, oh, sorry. Has, uh, has mentioned that, uh, that they do have some speed. That the Senate now not like uh, one vote, I mean, not autonomous, not very united. And from my observation of the Senate, over Senate viewpoint that they expressed in certain uh, social media, and I think maybe there are 10 to 20 Senate who express that they will vote for Move Party, uh, Move Forward Party, Kuntipa. So they have certain number of Senate who will vote for. We will, we will not see really how many uh, is that have uh, enough number, but they, they do have some Senate support the move forward party. Okay. Uh, All of them are supposed to be independent thinker, as they told themselves and telling us. But you cannot read their intention only by their behavior. Up to now, they always vote on the conservative side. Maybe, as Dada once said, 20, 30, sometimes you see vote differently. On this occasion, most of them consider what is going on as a threat. But where is the red line? Is it about the situation in the deep south? Is it about Article 112? Is it about this and that? I think we have about two months to discuss with them. Yes, we need to. We cannot go on this way. This is my thinking. We need to communicate and reach out. Otherwise, we are stuck. I don't know whether this is a good idea or not, but at least we should find our own way something which is too threatening to the understanding of the conservative. We need more time to seek a, what shall I say, explanation, discussion, deliberation. We don't need to do everything at one time, you see? So one senator is fearful of this, another one is fearful of that, and we create all the opposition from all of them because we did address any part of their fear, of their concern. I think we, if we work on this, we can get 
bobots that 20 or 30 that you are taking, they are ready to give. Very well. Thank you very much, Ajahn. And if there's no more question, I would like to thank all our distinguished panelists uh, uh, for joining and for giving us your insight into this election, a very historic election for Thailand. And of course, I would like to thank as well IDEA for help co-sponsoring this event and make this possible. Um, if you enjoy our, this kind of discussion uh, and you're not yet a member of the FCCT, please, uh, you can apply um, and, and you can be, you know, be updated about our activities. And before we leave, I want to just quickly change note and advertise for our future events. This Friday, May 19, we have a, a pub quiz night here at 7 p.m. So if you like pub quiz, you can do that. And on Monday the 22nd, we have a conversation with um, uh, Monaco editor Tyler Brule, which is, uh, will be very interesting indeed for those of you who are a big fan of um, the Monacos. And that's uh, in the evening at 7 p.m. on Monday. So on that note, uh, again, thank you very much for coming. And I, Panu Wong Shoum, former president of the SCCT, uh, uh, would like to thank everyone and have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you.